Hey everyone, welcome to part 2 of my hand tutorial series. This video will cover adding object-specific grip poses to our pre-existing animation blueprint that we created in part 1. At the end you will be able to pick up a pistol and a melee weapon. The functionality we are going to make in this video is dependent on what we did in the last tutorial, so if you haven't completed it yet, make sure you do so before continuing on with this tutorial. In the last tutorial, I had you follow a link to my Patreon to download the tutorial assets. If you haven't downloaded them yet, please follow this link and do that. Included in these files were two weapon meshes of my own creation. The first is a machete I designed, and the second is a classic recreation of Han Solo's blaster from Star Wars. Because I'm a nerd. We need to import these into our Unreal project so we can use them in the tutorial. So we are going to start with that. You can import them here, but if you would like to keep your assets a bit more organized, you should make a new folder called Meshes. Open it up, and we are going to place our assets into here. I want to start with the machete, so let's create a new folder called Blade and then open it up. Navigate to where you extracted the tutorial files and open up the main file. Inside, navigate to Weapon Assets, Melee. And this is where you will find our SM underscore cleaver mesh and its textures. Grab them and drag them into the content browser. You will get a pop-up asking you how you want to import the mesh, and if you scroll down you will see an option to create a new material. You can turn this off, but I'm going to leave it on and press Import All. Now that our mesh and textures are in the project, let's rename the material to M underscore blade. And then we want to double click on it to open it up. Dock that at the top of the screen and then we're going to navigate back to the main project viewport. Select all the textures for the mesh and drag them into the material editor. Let's plug these in. The base color goes to base color, normal to normal, and the AO, roughness, and metallic are channel packed. So drag the red output into ambient occlusion, green into roughness, and finally blue into metallic. Now apply and save the material. You should see our materials applied to the asset automatically. If not, just apply them yourself. Now let's import the gun. Navigate back to our main meshes folder and here we will want to create another folder called Blaster and open it up. Navigate back to the weapon asset folder in your Windows Explorer and open the pistol folder. Here you will see the SK underscore Blaster mesh and all of its textures. Select them and drag them into the content browser. In the import window, we want to create new materials on import. This will create three new materials, as this gun was meant to be a color ID mesh, but for time reasons we will not be setting that up. Instead, the gun will just have three material slots. Once the blaster and its textures are inside the project, open up the new materials that Unreal created. If you look at the names of the materials, you will see that they all have assigned colors. This color corresponds to the texture maps we have imported, so for blue we will drag in all of our textures that contain blue in their name. Select all of the blue textures and drag them into the blue material. Now plug them in like before. The base color goes to base color, normal to normal, and the AO, roughness and metallic, are channel packed, so drag the red output to ambient occlusion, green into roughness, and finally blue into metallic. After you have applied and saved the blue material, repeat the same process for the red and green material and their textures. When you are finished, your material should look like this. Now let's open up the gun mesh and in the upper left corner, we need to make sure that our textures are assigned correctly. Your gun should look like this. There is one thing about the blaster that we are going to want to fix, and this is the physics on the actual gun mesh. As of right now, the blaster mesh has a giant capsule collision on it. And this is a problem because if we don't fix it, the blaster will just roll away from the user when they drop it. Fixing this is optional, so if you aren't interested, feel free to skip to the next step. To fix our physics, navigate to the uppermost right corner of the screen, and you will see a little yellow sphere that when you hover over it, it will identify itself as the blaster physics asset. Click on it to open that up. Here you will see our mesh collisions. The first step is to navigate over to the left side of the screen, and in the skeleton tree tab, you will see the root. Right click on that and delete it. That will get rid of the capsule collision. Now we need to create new ones. In the skeleton tree tab, you can see a little gear in the upper right corner of that tab. Click on it and it will open up the context menu. Scroll down to the bottom to where it says bones and select show all bones. Now we will be able to see our skeleton bones. Now that we can see our skeleton bones, we're going to add some new collisions to the root. In order to do that, you want to select this root bone here, and then you want to right click on it. And here we can add a new shape. So we're going to add a box first, and this will be kind of like the handle part. And essentially what we're going to do is, you know, scale it down so it better fits this handle. And then we'll rotate it and move it up a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna make, we're gonna go back to that root bone again, and we're gonna right click and we're going to create another box. 
and this will be for like kind of the main body of the gun. So we're gonna move that up and this is still attached to the root bone and it's all part of the same like physics bone. But you know, the important thing is that we're, we're setting up accurate physics. So when this thing is in the level and the user throws it, it doesn't roll away. So then we'll scale it down so it better fits the body. All right, cool, that's the body done. Now we want to right click on that bone again and uh, add a capsule. And this one is gonna be for the scope. So we'll drag it up on top of the scope here and we will rotate it on the Y and then we're gonna scale it way down. It's just so it kinda, you know, fits around that scope piece. And then we're actually gonna, you know, create another capsule component by right clicking on that root bone, going to add shape and adding a, another capsule. And this one will be for the barrel. This is the last one we have to do. So rotate that one, you know, about 90 degrees on that Y axis, scale it down. So it's just kind of like a long tube, drag it up and then drag it out on top of the mesh here. And we're gonna have to scale that one up just a little bit so it better fits that scale of the barrel. Now our asset will have more accurate physics when we wanna drop it. Now let's set up our grab enum so we can add new grab types to our pre-existing grab component. In your content browser, navigate to VR template blueprints. And once inside, we are looking for an enumerator called the grab type. Open it up and here we will add two new values. At the top of the enum, click the enumerator twice. We want to name them pistol and melee. When you are finished, your enum should look like this. Now just save and close the enum. Now that we have set up our enumeration, we need to add new sockets to our hand mesh so that we can snap the object to the correct position on the hand when the user picks it up. To do this, we need to navigate to the folder that contains the custom hand mesh. For me, it's located in Content, QK VR Assets, Hands. Once you have found the mesh location, we want to locate the QK custom hand skeleton and double click to open it up. Once you're inside the skeletal mesh asset, the first thing we need to do is locate the hand slash R bone. This is what we will be adding our sockets to for the object snapping code. On the left hand side of the screen, you will see our skeleton tree, and at the very top, you will see our hand underscore R bone. Right click on this menu, and in the context menu, select the add socket option. For this first one, we wanna call it pistol underscore socket. Now we need to adjust it so it fits into the hand animation. In the upper right corner of the screen under animation, you can see a menu that is set to default. Click on it, and in the drop down menu, select use specific animation. Once you select that, you will see an option to add a preview animation. Let's do that now. Where it says none, click and search for QK Anim gun hold. Select it and the hand will animate into the gun hand pose. Now we can navigate back to the left side of our screen and on pistol underscore socket, we want to right click and in the context menu, hover over add preview asset. Here we can type the name of the mesh we want to add. Type blaster and select our blaster model. As you can see, it's not oriented correctly, and we need to fix this. So click on the pistol socket, and we will need to move the socket and rotate it so that it fits into our hand animation. Then, once the mesh is in a position that you feel good with, navigate back to the pistol socket and right-click on it again. And in the context menu, select Remove All Attached Assets. Now we can create a socket for our melee weapon. Go back to the top of the skeleton hierarchy and select the hand underscore R bone again. Then right click on it and add socket again. Name this one melee socket. Now we can configure this socket too. Now we want to go back to the melee socket and right click on it. Let's add another preview asset by hovering over the option and typing cleaver. Go back to the upper right hand corner of the screen under animation and change our animation to QK anim knife hold. Now we can set the location and the rotation of the asset to fit our hand pose. When you have it at a position that you are comfortable with, go back to the melee socket again and right click on it and select remove all attached assets. Then just save the skeleton and leave it open so we can access it later. Then navigate back to our main project viewport. Now that we have set up our hand sockets, we need to add functionality to our grab component in order for our objects to snap into our hands when we pick them up. In the content browser, navigate to the VR template, then blueprints again. And this time we want to locate the grab component and then open it up. 
Once you are inside the grab component, navigate over to the event graph. Here we need to set our pawn and hand variables so that we can call specific objects and functions from them, as well as establish communication between the grab component and the BP hand anim. Locate the event begin play node, and then at the end of the set collision profile function, drag out and cast to the VR pawn. Then drag out from the object ref on the cast node and type get player pawn. Now we can start setting our variables from this pawn ref so we can use them inside the grab component blueprint. Drag out from as VR pawn and type left hand. This will give us a getter node for our left hand skeleton. From the left hand, we want to right click and select promote to variable, and then change its name to left hand ref. Then connect it up to the execution pin on the cast node. Now compile and save the blueprint. Then drag out from the blue pin of the left hand ref set node and type get anim instance. Drag off of the get anim instance and cast to the BP hand anim. Now we want to right click on the as BP hand anim pin and promote it to a variable. Name this one left hand anim. Now we need to do the same thing for the right hand. Go back to the cast to VR pawn node and drag out from the as VR pawn pin again, and get a reference to the right hand. Then promote it to a variable and name it right hand ref. Now drag out from the blue pin on the right hand setter that we just created and get its anim instance. Then from that same anim instance cast to the BP hand anim. Finally, right click on the as BP hand anim and promote it to a variable. Name this one right hand anim and then connect it back up to the rest of the function and compile and save. Now we will be able to call references to these variables within the functions of the grab component blueprint. Let's navigate over to the left side of the page and we want to open the try grab function. This is where we will set up the functionality for socket snapping. Inside the try grab function, we are going to want to locate the enum switcher for the grab type enum which we edited before. You will notice that there are now two functions at the very bottom called pistol and melee, and these are the values we added earlier. The best way to go about adding functionality to these values is to first navigate over to the disable physics if enabled function and select this string of logic, then copy it and scroll up slightly to paste it above. Since we are assigning two new values, let's paste it a second time. Now we can navigate back down to the enum switch function and drag out from the pistol pin and connect it to the first string of logic. Then connect the melee pin to the second string we created. We are going to program the code for our pistol first. Then on our first line that we made, drag out and type E switch on controller hand. Then drag out from the green pin on the back of the node and type get hand from motion source. Then drag out from the blue pin on that node and type motion controller. Now we want to go back to our controller hand switch node and drag out from the right pin. And we're going to create a set world location and rotation node. Right click on the empty space in the graph and type get attach parent and connect it up to the target of the set world location component. Now we want to get the socket location and rotation from the hand mesh, but I want to make this easy. So we are going to create a macro to speed up our coding process. Go to the left hand side of the graph and find the macros tab. Click the plus icon to create a new macro. You will notice that Unreal has automatically brought us inside this macro. Start by right clicking in any blank space on the graph and first type get socket location. Once that has been created, click directly below it and type get socket rotation. Now drag from the target on the socket location back to the input node and it will create a new input for the target. Then, drag from the in socket name back to the input node and it will create another input for the socket name. Now double click on the target line and the in socket line and then drag out from those reroute nodes down to the get socket rotation so it's connected up as well. Now drag from the return value of the get socket location and connect it up to the output. Then do the same with the get socket rotation return value. Now we need to change the output names. Go to the right hand side of the screen and change the name of the return values to their respective names. For the yellow return value, name it location, and for the purple return value, name it rotation. Then compile, and we have now created a new macro that will save us time with applying socket values. Finally, go back over to the left hand side of the screen and where it says new macro zero, right click on that and press rename. Change its name to get socket location and rotation. Then return back to the try grab function. Right click on the graph and type get right hand ref, and it will create a getter node for our right hand ref. Drag out from the blue pin on the getter and type get socket location and rotation. You will see a little M icon and that is the macro we just created. Select it and then drag from the location of our macro up to the location of the set world location. 
then do the same for the rotation node. Now we have to set the proper socket name. Navigate back to our skeletal mesh component and scroll down to the bottom of our hierarchy to where our pistol socket is. Double click on it and select the letters and press Ctrl C to copy it. Then head back to our grab component and on the socket name, paste it with Ctrl V. The reason we did this is because the socket name is case sensitive and it will not work unless it matches the variable name node. Now scroll down past the set world location and rotation node and right click on the empty space. Type get right hand anim and obtain a get node. Then drag out from that get node and type set object type. Set its value to gun hold and connect it to our set world location and rotation node. This will tell the animation graph to set the object type to gun hold once we program it in. Now we can do the same thing for the left hand. Select all of the code we just created and copy it then paste it directly above. Then we need to replace our right hand references with the left ones. Start by deleting the right hand get node and now click on the graph and type get left hand. Then plug it into the target of our get hand socket location and rotation macro. Now scroll to the end of the code and delete the right hand anim get code. Right click again and type get left hand anim and then plug it back into the enum object type setter node. Then connect our duplicated set world location and rotation to the left hand pin on the enum hand switch node. Now that we have programmed this code once, doing it again will be a lot easier. Let's do the melee code next. Grab all of the code we just created and press Ctrl C to copy it. Now scroll out and up on the graph to paste it up top. We can then connect the E switch on the controller hand that we just duplicated to the top line of logic that we created before. Now we just have to replace the socket names and the object type value. Start by going back to our skeletal mesh asset and scroll down to the bottom and double click on the melee socket. Copy the name and navigate back to the grab component. Now we just have to replace the pistol socket name with our melee socket on both of the macros. Simply copy and paste them. Now we can navigate to the end of the function and set object type to knife for both the right and left hand. Now we need to set up logic for when we want to drop our objects. In the top left corner of the screen, navigate to the try release function. Navigate to the enum switcher for the grab type enum and drag the pistol and melee pins onto the same reroute node that the free and snap pins are connected to then pan down the graph to the end of the drop function. Right after the is held boolean, right click on the graph and get another switch on controller hand node. Then drag out from the green pin on the back of the node and type get hand from motion source, then drag out from the blue pin on that node and type motion controller. Get a reference to our left and right hand anim. You can right click on the graph and type to add them or you can drag them out from the variables tab on the left. Drag out from the right hand anim get code and type set object type. Set its value to none and then connect it to the right pin of the E controller hand node. Then copy and paste the same set node and connect it to the left pin. Finally, connect the left hand anim getter to its target pin. Now we need to set up the actual blueprints for our blaster and melee weapon. Go back to the main project viewport and inside the content browser navigate to the VR template, then blueprints, and we are going to create the machete asset first. Locate a blueprint called grabbable small cube and right click on it. Select Duplicate and name it BP Blade, then open it up. Once you are inside the blueprint, navigate to the viewport and in the components tab on the left we want to select the static mesh component. Then navigate over to the right hand side of the blueprint under static mesh and set the static mesh to our SM underscore cleaver mesh, and then you will see the cube get replaced by our blade mesh. Now we want to scroll up under the transform tab and set the scale from 0.3 to 1 on all axes otherwise it will be too small. Now navigate back over to the left hand side of the blueprint editor and in the components tab select the grab component. If you navigate back over to the right side of the graph, under default you will see that the grab type is set to free. We want to change this to our melee grab type. Now compile and save the blueprint. Navigate back to the main project viewport and find our BP blade and drag it out into the level. Just place it on the little table for now. If you want, you can rotate the blade on its side and press N to snap it down on top of the table. If that doesn't work, try Shift End. Now let's create our blaster blueprint. Navigate back to the blueprint folder and locate BP underscore pistol. We want to right click on it and duplicate it. Name it BP underscore blaster and then open it up. Then navigate over to the viewport and locate the skeletal mesh gun component in the components tab and click on it. Now navigate over to the left hand side and under mesh we want to replace the basic gun with our blaster mesh. Just click the drop down menu and type blaster. Then scroll up to the transform options and set the scale from 0.5 to 1. Now we need to fix the muzzle location so the projectile will fire out from the front of the gun. In the components tab, click on the muzzle location and you will see the transform controls appear in the blueprint. Move it so it is at the end of our blaster barrel and rotate it negative 90 degrees on the Z axis. 
Now go back to the components tab and select the grab component snap and navigate over to the right. Change the grab type from snap to pistol. Now compile and save the blueprint. Then navigate back to the main project viewport and drag out our new blaster blueprint into the level. Then just place it on the little table next to our blade asset. Let's test our level and make sure that our assets are snapping to the proper location on the hands. You can see that our weapon assets are snapping to the proper socket locations, but we still need to set up the proper animations for each pickup object. Navigate to where you created your BP hand anim. For me, it's in the same folder as my hand mesh. When you find it, open it up. Now leave it open and navigate back to the main project viewport. We need to create a blend space for our grip poses. To create a new blend space, right click on the empty space on the content browser and inside the context menu, pan to animation and inside you are looking for blend space 1D. Click on it and then name it BS underscore object anim and then open it up. When we are inside the blend space, the first thing we want to do is locate axis settings and click the drop down arrow to expose its settings. You will then see horizontal axis. Click the drop down again and you will see two axis variables. Set the minimum axis value to 0 and the maximum axis value to 2. Now we want to go to the lower right hand corner of the screen and inside the asset browser we want to locate QK anim gun hold and drag it into the blend space. Put it directly in the middle at the 1 value. If at any point you mess up the location of the blend space on the graph, you can go to the blend samples tab on the left hand side of the screen and open the animation you wish to fix. Where it says none, set it to your intended value. For example, the pistol is set at 1. Now go back to the asset browser and locate the QK anim knife hold. Drag it onto the blend space and place it at the very beginning so it has a value of 0. Finally, grab the QK anim grip animation and drag it onto the end of the blend space so it has a value of 2. Now, save the blend space and navigate back to the BP hand anim. Once you are inside the BP hand anim, go over to the left hand side and open up the anim graph. Then, double click on the hand animation state machine to open it up. Now navigate over to the object state that we set up in our last tutorial and double click to open it up. We want to start by disconnecting and deleting the original grab animation. Then, in the asset browser on the lower right hand side, locate our BS object hold and drag it onto the graph. Then on the left hand side of the blueprint we want to locate our object type variable and drag it out onto the animation graph. Select get to create a get node and then drag out from that get node and type to float and it will convert the enum value to a float so you can plug it into the object hold blend space player. Then just plug the object hold blend space player into the output animation pose and compile and then save. Now we can test out our hand animations. You will now be able to pick up the blaster and the blade. They snap into the socket location on your hand meshes and your hand will animate into the correct pose depending on the object type. That is all for this tutorial. In the next one we will be adding functionality for procedural grip animations to our VR hands. Thank you all for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons for their continued support. I'll see you in the next one.